My name is Chris and today we're going to talk about the SVS Micro 3000 subwoofer. Welcome to the Vinyl Attack. Attack! How many of you have used a subwoofer in your two channel system? Okay. Of those, how many have stopped using that sub because of the inconvenience of having to adjust the level too often when you change from record to record or CD or what have you? Okay, you can put your hands down. I can't see them anyway. The reason I ask is because if there's one major complaint I hear about the use of a subwoofer in a two-channel system, it's the need for constant tinkering. I've heard from many an audio hobbyist over the years that having a subwoofer set up across the room from their listening position was simply too much of a bother when the need arose to adjust the levels during the different styles of music play. Having to get up, turn the bass up or down depending on the current song playing, along with any other minor adjustments the speaker might offer, just wasn't worth the subwoofer's ability to hit the lower registers that can fill out a soundstage. A popular method has been to simply find the album that has the most low end in your collection, set your levels for that, and leave it be. After all, that's pretty much what your regular speakers are doing anyway, putting out the sound that they're being fed. But for the more discerning amongst you, that simply wasn't enough. Subwoofers are just too finicky to add to your two-channel system. The SVS Micro 3000 aims to change that. But before I get into the smartphone or tablet app created by SVS to assuage your concerns about a subwoofer's potentially pesky needs for attention, let's first dive into how this piece is made and, of course, how it sounds. After all, if the bass heads are here for this review, they're going to want to know immediately if this thing can shake a wall as well as it can deliver quality sound. With its active, dual-firing 8-inch aluminum drivers designed acoustically and electrically in parallel, meaning they fire at the same time to produce the most bass without the cabinet dancing around the room, among other benefits, the Micro 3000 was conceived and built to solve the issue of wanting a deep, rich bass sound for your hi-fi system or home theater, but not wanting an overly large, perhaps unsightly box sitting in your room. SVS have achieved this in part by having the Micro 3000 benefit from the increasingly powerful trickle-down technology practice using information gained when designing their upper tier model, the 16 Ultra. Bringing the combination of high output MOSFET transistors with Class D transistors, the 26.5 pound Micro 3000 is capable of putting out an impressive 800 watts RMS and 2500 watts of peak power to a double thick MDF cabinet that measures only 10.9 inches high, 11.7 inches wide, and 10.7 inches deep. For those of you waiting to hear if this little speaker can shake your walls, the short answer is yes. But more importantly so, I would say it's how it sounds when it's doing said wall shaking, if in fact that's how you're going to set your subwoofer up. Capable of going as low as 23 hertz, this $900 speaker will definitely make the pictures on your walls move, but impressive bass and overall volume is only a small part of the story here. I pulled out a few different sources of music to see how this sub would interact not only with the varying styles being played, but also with my system in particular. If a subwoofer doesn't integrate well with the current setup, it's clearly not going to offer much benefit in terms of sound. I was happy to find that right out of the box, the Micro 3000's default setting were a great place to start, and there was a seamless integration with my speakers. With a few minor tweaks in the very powerful SVS app, I had a sound system that was ideal for my main room in no time. John Coltrane's Lush Life album was given the white glove one-step pressing treatment recently by Kraft Recordings, and it is as sonically impressive as it is musically. While I realized that this album was originally compiled of unreleased recordings John had done at Rudy Van Gelder's studio and used without John's permission, I must selfishly say that I'm glad it happened. Side A of this album features nothing more than Coltrane on his sax, Earl May on bass, and Art Taylor on drums. This pared-down sound of a jazz trio really lets individual notes come through clear and precise, doubly so on this one-step pressing. Focusing mainly on the bass tones, as this is a subwoofer review, Earl May's acoustic bass was as deep and rich as you'd expect it to be, and with the power on hand of the Micro 3000, it filled the purposeful gaps Coltrane left in the music, giving it a full and extensive range. The toms and kick drum of Taylor had a more visceral feel, as the depths of the subwoofer were easily able to fill the unoccupied bass frequencies the Q Acoustics 3030i stand mount and Bowers & Wilkins 603 floor standing speakers I used for accompaniment were able to reach. 
On the whole, the title Lush Life seemed quite apropos as the Micro 3000 brought out the low sounds that made the adjective lush a suitable synonym. There are probably no more polar opposites to a John Coltrane album than that of a band like Pantera, so that's precisely what I queued up next. Taking the Rhino Records reissue Cowboys from Hell from 2020, I wanted to see just how tight and agile the 3000 could be when pumping out the insane double bass performance by the human metronome, Vinnie Paul. Aluminum drivers, as the Micro 3000 has, can be quite fast and powerful when driven by the right amp, but can leave you underwhelmed if ran underpowered. Considering the amp here is built in, I had no concerns about a lack of wattage in its performance, so it would be a clear-cut pass-fail instance. I was immediately treated to dynamic, chest-punching drums that ran tight and full and never sounded bloated or sloppy. With Rex Brown adding his growling, thundering bass to the mix, you might be forgiven for thinking that the rhythm section would sound muddy and unarticulate, but I can assure you, you would also be wrong. With Pantera's want to keep their recorded performance as close as possible to their live performances, there are many songs where Rex is left to fill the space rhythmically while Dime is blazing away during a lead break and the Micro 3000 was able to successfully showcase their performance in a very accurate and convincing way. Of course, you cannot talk about the album Cowboys without talking about perhaps the best track on the record, Domination. It was here that I found out that I needed to adjust a couple of pictures hanging in my living room as the enormous bass drop sounds during the heaviest breakdown of all time shook them to the point of vibration. I also realized that I might want to turn down the level of the sub a little, or at least the overall volume, but if I wanted to see what this smaller package could deliver, this was definitely a convincing drive. With all the rampant rumors and conspiracy theories about the latest 30th anniversary reissue of Nirvana's Nevermind running wild in the vinyl community, I took the remastered album and placed it under the lamp of scrutiny to see if it was worth all the fuss. Having no trouble getting a copy for 28 bucks off Amazon, where you can still find a copy as of this video, so save your money on the eBay markup, I found that I was quite impressed with what I heard for the money. Yes, I'd much have preferred to pick this up at my local record store, but with the copy seemingly limited at independent dealers, I took what I could get and played it several times to reacquaint myself with this classic. I found that Chris Novoselic's bass was more grungy than I remembered. See what I did there? I'm a dad, I got dad jokes. It was an excellent compliment to Kurt Cobain's overdriven guitar and once again filled space perfectly where it was needed and simply drove the music forward when coupled with the pounding drums of some guy named Dave. It might seem a touch difficult to believe if you haven't experienced the difference a quality subwoofer can make in your hi-fi system, but I assure you that the fullness and sound, once heard, is hard to be without. The Micro 3000 delivered on its claim of having powerful, deep bass that integrates seamlessly into your current system in no small part due to its feature-rich app. From the home screen, you'll be greeted with the volume and preset options to get the ball rolling. You can slide the volume bar back and forth for quick, large adjustments, or tap the adjacent arrows for dialing in a more refined setting. Just below that is the ability to quickly load any presets you might have saved, as you're able to name and adjust three of them. You can select the different adjustable options here as well, or use the main menu option in the upper right that shows the extensive list of adjustable features to customize the sound of this sub until your heart is content. Your low pass filter, which tells the sub which frequencies you'd like it to handle, and again using large or small movements, and also the slope of these tones setting how quickly they roll off. If you're using the 3000 for home theater, of which it's completely capable, you have the option of turning on or off the LFE feature, which many home theater amps employ to get the best frequency range for movies or TV being shown. While I won't go over every detail in the app in the interest of time, you'll also find phase, polarity, a very effective EQ, room gain compensation, port tuning, an ability to save and load presets, which you can rename as you choose, your basic system settings, including the subwoofer's standby mode and the ability to rename the sub itself as well, the tab with all the contact information for SVS you could possibly want, and a very helpful tutorial app that covers everything from how to connect the 3000 to the finer details of every option I've just read here. In lieu of using this app, however, you are still able to control most of the features, and certainly the main ones, using the illuminated back panel of the sub, so don't fret if you're not much of a smart app kind of person. You'll still have no trouble dialing in the sound you want. So, with all this being said, are there any deterrents with the Micro 3000? As it stands, not really. Yes, the price has gone up $100 in the last year, and that just sucks, but that's also just currently how things are, sadly. 
I would say that if you're looking for the most room-shaking, thunderous bass you've ever heard, well, this might not be for you. Or you might want to get two of them if you're looking for a 7.2 surround sound solution. I suppose you could say it's not the best at pounding out the low 20 hertz frequency in a large room, but really, show me a small sub that is. In the end, I really liked the SVS Micro 3000. It offers excellent visceral low end that goes satisfyingly deep with plenty of authority, and it has by far the most adjustability of any sub near its price point with the brilliant Smart App. It's compact enough to go almost anywhere you need, it has a high end finish, and I like it so much that I'm actually keeping this speaker for myself. That's right, I bought this Micro 3000, and it will be a mainstay in my main system for the foreseeable future. If you've been looking for a compact sub solution for your two channel or home theater system, I would definitely encourage you to take a look at this speaker. While I could easily spend another 10 minutes going over the arguments made both for and against having a subwoofer in your two channel system, I think I'll leave that for the comment section below. Thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon who helped make these videos possible, and thank you for stopping by to watch, and I look forward to next time.